Okay, we have the Taurus 605 357 Magnum here. We're going to clear it really quick. Make sure there's no rounds in the chamber. What I wanted to talk to you guys is single loading one round, okay? So what's the whole point of the video? Well, the point of the video is loading a single round if you should have to. Let's say that you run out of speed loaders and speed strips that you carry on your person and you want a single round. Well, an idea for carrying ammo on your person is maybe a pouch like this where you can reach quickly and it's at waist level that you can wear. This is a pellet pouch made by Crossman. I've got 10 rounds in here. This is enough for uh, actually for a couple speed loaders, the rounds that are in here alone. So 10 rounds. So this is something you wear on your person. You can get to it quick. So you're in a situation, oh my gosh, I ran out of ammo. Okay. Now what you want to do with your revolver is you want to practice at night also. And you want to pra practice finding that uh, on a five shot revolver. If you notice where my, where my fingers are in the flute here, you can feel with, with your fingers with the flute. And what that does is that drives it to the three o'clock position and you just drop around and it doesn't get hung up on the rubber. Now, if you're at night, notice my fingers are like this at nighttime. I can still find it by grabbing this edge right here and go right in. But it takes practice. You have to feel something to get it in. So if you notice, if somebody were to put it uh, at the four o'clock position, you notice that it gets hung up on the rubber here. So you always want to make sure you're three o'clock position. That's the whole point of grabbing the flute. Now, when you're grabbing the flutes, that's the valley. Okay, you're in the valley. You got a round in the chamber, okay? Now what you want to do counterclockwise, I want to grab the high spot or the hill, which is right here. Now what I do is I flip it like that and I'm in. See, I'm in. I don't have to worry about doing this. Oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Did I get it? Oh, sometimes you won't, okay? What you want to do is just get in the habit of doing everything the same way every single time, whichever works fastest for you. So here I am, three o'clock position, okay? I get it in, high spot from the valley, and I'm in. Notice that the flutes, notice that there's one flute on each side, and that's the reason for grabbing that high spot. So you're at three o'clock, that's the reason for gr grabbing that high spot right there. Grab that high spot so the flutes guide you in. So that's the thing with one round, okay? Okay, so I'm going to show you a speed loader. I'm going to use long ones, a 357 Magnum. The reason why I'm using these is because they're longer. So I want to demonstrate something for you. When I hold it, I typically hold it like this so that my middle finger, my bad finger, my naughty finger is on that top round and I can feel it. And then my thumb is right here. The reason why I don't put my fingers here is because it's the rubber is touching it. So I think two fingers, I can work with it. I've done it before. Um, what I do is once again, I've got it. I've got the flutes. You notice right here. I've got the flutes right here with my fingers and I'm at the three o'clock position. Okay. So when I'm going in now, what I do is I just wait till the tips are in because this is not a pushing device. It's a release device. People have to realize that you don't use this to push the rounds in. You use it to line up the rounds and then they go in. Smooth as that. So that's one thing to remember. Now, if had I been had I been at the four o'clock position right here, what would happen is one of the rounds would get stuck right here and wouldn't go in. Or let's say I had it at the three o'clock position and I pushed a little bit too far, then I'm going to get stuck and I'm going to have to wiggle this to get it to come off. Okay. So yes, yeah, Safari is might be better. You know. But uh, these you can these are affordable online. Um, HKS, you know, I've used these for many, many years, probably 25 years or something like that. The Safaris, I've used them. Um, but yeah, it's good to have a variety of speed loaders and see which one works for you. But I'm just showing you the HKS uh, here because uh, some people were saying it rubs against the rubber and stuff, although you can change the grips if you want to. But they were saying it kind of touches right here so that they can't get it in but 
But what you, you don't want to push the rounds in. You just want to find the edge of the holes and then release it. That's all you, that's all you have to do. Now, what I recommend if you're doing this, that you use snap caps. The only reason why I'm using live rounds is just to show that it's going to work. But I recommend using snap caps right here and that you clear the whole table. I mean, I got a white table here, so everything comes off the table. There is no ammunition. And I've inspected the revolver to make sure there's no rounds in the chamber. So what you're looking at is you're going to open this up. You're going to check it. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to grab your five snap caps. And then you're going to grab your one round because some of these come with six, I think so that you can practice your single load right here. Um, so you're going to practice like that uh, on a table that's empty. So you don't want any live rounds on the table. So my camera's a little fuzzy here. But anyway, sorry about the fuzz and all that. Uh, this is autofocus here. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys that, that you can work with stuff. If you, if you uh, get familiar with your revolver, if you get familiar with it and you do it in the dark, say five, ten times a day, just practice doing your speed loader in the dark and your uh, single shot in the dark, that's fine. Now, if you want to do realistic dark stuff for 357 Magnum, the shells get a little sticky because they're a little tighter. Um, you might want to use these shells because they stick in pretty good in the cylinder, whereas 38s fall out real easy. So you get the sticky drill, taking out the sticky rounds, but one thing I tell people, too, is there's a lot of guys that say, oh, you don't have to clean your revolver, you know. But the thing is, the cylinder, the, uh, you know, inside there, it can get dirty. And it can, especially with 357 Magnum, if it gets dirty in here, it could affect your extraction, and getting your rounds out. So you want to make sure you clean that after every range visit. That's what I do. You don't have to, but that's what I do. Because if I'm carrying 357 Magnum, um, and I'm loaded and ready to go, and I'm carrying it, and I have to use it, then when I eject them shells, I know I'm going to have a better chance at reloading. And another thing about the forcing cone is, with this revolver, I don't have to worry about the forcing cone heating up right there, because I've got my fingers here, and I'm indexed right there to put in the rounds. So there might be some people online that show something like that, uh, but I found that you don't need two fingers, so you can have this finger over far enough you're not going to be anywhere near that forcing cone uh, when you reload the revolver. Whereas the 38s, it's cold here, gets a little hot there, 357 Magnum, that's obvious. That's been known for decades. So, But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, so pra practice as realistic as you can in the house, but at the same time, uh, you know, getting out to the range and one of, the, one of the things I want to say that's underrated these days that I've noticed just on YouTube videos, I'm talking instructors too and uh, speed shooters and all kinds of shooters is the fact that everybody's kind of shooting out in the open these days. And it's fine to get your speed and your timer times, but let's get back to using cover. Let's be, get back to being smart about using cover. Even if we do got buckets of bullets under our handgun, you know, and plenty of ammo. Let's practice getting back into using cover wisely and using it on our range visits and stuff. And all it is really is that you can cut out a piece, you can have like a big piece of cardboard or plywood that you can stand behind to uh, create cover for yourself so that you can practice with cover. Um, cover is kind of underrated. With cover, what you do with a, a five shot revolver or any gun is you want to shoot to get to cover and then the extra rounds that you have, that's going to cover you if they get around the corner. So that's one thing to get into habit of is shooting while going to cover so that you're protected. Because let's face it, if a guy's doing speed shooting out in the, out in the open with like eight targets and he's trying to do his time timer thing, he wants to, you know, bust out a new time that's quicker. What he's doing is he's going boom, 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 boom. boom. And let's say that these bullets here, these uh, snap caps are real people. Let's say they all had a gun, okay? Do you think you're really going to take all these guys out without these guys shooting back? I don't think so. So we have to be more realistic. And uh, that's one reason why I like Robert Keller uh, on his videos on Pantio. Uh, he's really realistic. And he was saying the same thing. You're not just going to go. 
in speed shooting, even though time is impressive, even though you can get faster shooting. Boom, 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 or even boom, 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 boom. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your life because these other guys, if they're armed, they're going to shoot back, okay? So ideally, what we want to practice with is maybe just a couple people or a couple targets rather than all these targets, you know, too many targets, and they're too small these days too. They're about 10 inches. I think a target should be about the size of a pop can because that's about the size, somewhere near the size of like what's in the chest, like the human heart. And the heart drops blood pressure faster than any other organ. And obviously the brain box in between the eyes. But I'm just saying um, you need to have smaller targets and you need to have fewer targets and you need to have cover. It's some three things. And that's really uh, what special ops uh, Robert Keller was talking about. And I think that's wise. And that's how I've been taught. I've been taught, you know, to keep your head down, you know, keep cover and stuff like that. When I got trained when I was younger, uh, my dad shot revolvers quite a bit. And he's always still to this day, he's still using cover every time he goes to the range. And you can just make like a, a plywood cutout and then you just bring it on the range or you can have it in your backyard. He uses it in the backyard because he's got his own land. Uh, but when he comes and visits me, sometimes he'll bring his uh, his uh, cover, his uh, plywood pieces that he made, and you'll just throw them quickly in the truck and bring them on, out on the range that I'm at. But uh, yeah, use snap caps and make sure that everything's clear on the table. Absolutely no live rounds at all. Uh, and practice. And then also practice in the dark. I know it sounds kind of... Uh, Hard for some people to do, but you really need to practice in the dark with every pistol. It doesn't matter what it is, even a semi-auto. You need to get used to doing them snap caps in the dark also, even though you should probably have a light or some kind of flashlight or something with you. It's, it's nice to practice in the dark. So anyway, thanks for watching, you guys.